All right, y'all, another round of managing here in the Person of Food Forest. Starting early, so the lighting might not be the best, but um, I'm just gonna do it piece by piece, just so, uh, yeah, I think it's, it works better like that. Kind of like this little way of doing it. So right now I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, top these lucanas off that have been getting, growing very, very nicely. Really love lucana and how well it responds post pruning. So I'm gonna go, go ahead and give it another prune so that these uh, prickly pears can get some sunlight and the turmerics that are coming up can get some sunlight. And also just to be one step ahead of the lucana. Lucana is very, very quick to set seed. So it's very always advised to, to be on top of lucana. Don't ever let lucana get ahead of you. Unless of course you need seed for other projects or whatever. And then this china berry also needs to have its canopy uh, reduced um, just so that we can get more sunlight in and more airflow for the uh, summertime humidity, summertime uh, heat, and just get some, yeah, open up sunlight. So be right back. All right, that didn't take too long. All the lucanas are chopped back and nice little a little bit more open area. Lucanas have very fine leaves, so it's not much of a... Uh, doesn't really uh, shade out things too bad. But like I said, I'm actually going to Oregon for two weeks here soon. So I'm trying to stay ahead of certain trees that uh, set seed, flower and seed very fast. And Lucana's probably top 10 on the list. So how busy a Lebex can kind of get their own bit of sunlight here. I really like them as well. Really like keeping them about this high. Whenever they start to lean, just kind of give them a little cut back and they'll they'll thicken up and, and uh, not lean as hard. But yeah, I kind I like cutting the lucanas back really hard, giving them a fresh um, cut on the main on the main leader, just because the regrowth is a little bit more uh, a little bit more. It's a little it's a little better. Uh, let's see. Whereas if you like, here, let's see if I can find an example. This is obviously not the right fit, but let's just say this was the tree here. If you left it like this, then it would like try to come back from these here and like, it'll be a little bit less resilient. Um, sometimes you get kind of get a little lazy and just can leave it like this, but I prefer for Lucana specifically to have it shoot back on the main, on the main trunk. So I got this China Berry as well. Really stoked on China Berry. I really think it's a very, very great tree. A lot more cost effective than the Corimbia Terrellianas. Kind of serves the same function. Doesn't go quite as straight up like an arrow, but it's good enough. I just wanted to show the biomass it produces before I manage the biomass. So yeah, a lot of beautiful, beautiful biomass here. Here's another piece. Okay, so definitely don't sleep on the china berries, but make sure to keep them maintained. Like I said before in another video, I like to use natural branching points as my guide. So it'll hopefully focus this energy on re-sprouting up there. Really like a nice light step ladder, aluminum step ladder. This is a five or no four um, step makes it easy to do managing. But I'm also gonna be using the pole saw and the pole bypass pruners. So I'm gonna do do a little bit of lifting up of certain trees like the Corimbias and maybe doing some canopy work and doing more thinning of bananas. So I'll show real quick, kind of like the next, what I'm gonna be doing next. So what I did here was actually get rid of all these bananas. This was a really beautiful banana patch. I think the blue javas. But it was just too, it's too shady in this middle alley. So I'm trying to open up as much as I can because uh, yeah, I, I really don't see the blue java being that great of a candidate for, for whatever reason for this area. Um, so kind of just culling the blue javas and using them specifically for biomass. So the next step would be to sort of find these trees, these like royal princianas and stuff that are kind of not needed because there are other trees 
that are doing better. Same with these bananas, like it's, it's a little too congested in here. Um, perhaps this banana clump as well. Like I said, this is the middle alley. It's nice to open up sunlight here for the middle alley. Uh, but yeah, you can see this avocado is trying to go up, but it's impeded by this banana. Like I said before, I work on a banana farm, so I don't need to uh, have much priority for bananas. I do like the um, the Orinoco has been very, very good in the system. Much more resilient than the Blue Java. People call it burro banana as well. It's I'm not sure if it's exactly it, but so this needs to get harvested soon and then managed as well because it's a little bit, a little bit messy here. See how the banana sort of in everybody's way. Nice little pineapple. Yeah, so opening up more sunlight. Now that the major like chop and drop of the Mexican sunflower and the napier grass is done, I can focus on the more detailed canopy work. So for example, like let's see, hmm, maybe like maybe I might manage this Royal Ponstiana here, lift it up a little bit so that this native mahogany can have a little bit more sunlight. See how like this is touching this. It's ideal for like the stratas not to be quite touching each other or for there to be a gap at least. And same for these Corumbia tropianas. They can get lifted up. I'm not probably going to do any any sort of canopy work on the Corumbias just because fall is going to be here around the corner. It's going to start getting cold and dry again. So I think I could uh, have another year of big Corumbias and then maybe next spring do a radical pruning. So. Another banana that I'm really enjoying is uh, the Saba. So yeah, gonna be knocking out some some bananas that are kind of in the way. Um, then doing some, maybe some canopy work with, uh, let me show you this actually real fast. This tropical almond is putting on growth. Super nice. And it seems to be doing quite all right, hanging in the under, understory for a bit. I'm sure it'll shoot up eventually. Um, yeah, not the best lighting because it's still kind of early, but let me show you what else I'm trying to do. The turmerics are doing very, very well here. I'm very excited about that. Look at this beautiful turmeric. Um, another thing that I do this time of year is I, I have no mercy on, on my, my moringas here. They are an amazing plant, but it's time for them to move on. I don't need their their uh, their growth anymore. I can really, really, really be hard on them. Uh, you can see how many times I've already chopped this moringa and how much growth is happening here. So, so yeah, that'll be the plan for the day. Opening up sunlight and airflow for the turmeric for all the other baby trees, and uh, managing. Let's see what was it, moringas. Managing some canopies of the Royal Pincianas. Managing the bananas that are in the way. And uh, yeah, we'll see kind of uh, what difference it makes. Yeah, here's another uh, Orinoco. So very, really, really versatile banana. You can use it like a plantain, cook it green or, or ripe. Much better as a cooking banana. Uh, but yeah, so we'll... We'll see how far I get today and uh, see the difference of, of uh, the sunlight intrusion after I'm done. So I'm managing bananas right now and I figured I'd do a quick little uh, tip here. I like to kind of focus on one species at a time sometimes. So I'm just focusing on bananas, skipping to each banana that needs managing and then I'll move on to other species like maybe Moringa. But real quick, so this, is a rack that's producing now in summer. It's a very good time of year for banana production, a lot of water. So I'm obviously gonna keep that and see if I can get a nice harvest out of it. And it's really tempting to want to keep this next one right here as the future, but the timing is a little off, at least for me here in the context that I'm in. Um, falls right around the corner, like I said, and before long, it's gonna be not the best conditions for banana production with no irrigation, mind you. If you have irrigation, you're fine for the most part. So, um, yeah, I think it's kind of customary to, to tell people, you know, to like leave one 
and then the other for the next generation whatever but in these sorts of crazy dense systems i kind of like treating the bananas as like i'm gonna get one harvest per year almost just kind of just get a, one nice summer harvest you know have a couple of bananas and kind of treat them as just like uh yeah a summer harvester so i'd probably leave this one this one's probably gonna if there if you do have a rough winter then this one will um be young enough to kind of just like withstand it and then continue putting out new leaves and then by the time next summer rolls around it'll probably put on another nice rack right like that whereas this one it might want to push flower in october you know and then now it's going to have a bunch of energy to try to feed to a developing rack when it's november december you know so yeah just a quick little tip um, i'm gonna keep managing now all right so same deal here this uh this banana rack is gonna be ready for picking this in the next coming weeks you know so very beautiful summer banana rack and then you see i already managed it my phone locked locked me out so i couldn't film um this was this could have been a beautiful future for this banana like it was an amazing banana super vigorous super healthy but like i said i don't really want bananas coming into fruiting during uh, the fall so i'm going to go ahead and just i went ahead and just chopped it back i got this beautiful pup that um will make its way up and then by next summer hopefully it'll be looking like that we'll see um but yeah lots of biomass and i'll show you where I've been putting all this biomass. It's important. So for now, I'm just going to keep managing bananas. Hopefully this, this is helpful, breaking it down in little steps to kind of like this. So this, I'm actually going to cull or like be even more uh, intense on this management here. So these two bananas, very beautiful. This is uh, coming right now into fruiting. And um, I could keep this but I'm not gonna keep it. Uh, again, I have bananas coming out of my ears and um, yeah, I want this to be more of a clump. You see, this is a beautiful one coming up. This one's coming up too. These two are kind of too close to each other. I wanna reset it, let it have some more space and uh, utilize this biomass that I really need for the summer. Um, so just considerations, every banana clump is different and you need to tailor it differently come for for what you need you know so uh some some of them you you leave the fruit some of them you sacrifice early so it's all depends on what you need for the system what the system needs overall so all right all right the managing on this row for the bananas has been is done for the most part you see that now that one's going to be the one that's going to give fruit just going to show a little bit of uh, the openness that it causes in terms of like the sunlight. Look at that little pocket of sunlight coming in. This still needs to get managed too. So I'm just gonna stop for now to film because there's, I've already made enough progress to show some results. Obviously this one's done. Just much more airflow, much more breathability, much more access now. Really nice, same here. This banana is off. It was coming off this way nice you know this banana is gonna get harvested soon so this will get managed and uh open up sunlight these bananas look at that pocket coming in boom really beautiful pocket of sunlight coming in now that this got managed down here and then finally this one got managed also i think this is more of that blue java they just don't have the structure that i want um I'm not sure what the deal is with them but that's all part of trialing varieties but i kept one just in case see what it does so yeah you can see all of these are gone i'm just leaving a small amount if i see that this is not getting results i'll just go ahead and chop it down so now all the biomass um has been used to reinforce this new area that i've planted out um, this is a more wild sort of area a lot of muscadine grapes a lot of caesar weed and stuff and those crazy weeds were um it was just infested with all that stuff and it still is there's a lot of weed seed load in this in the soil here so i went crazy heavy on the biomass here just because that's kind of you know the whole point i could have easily made light work for myself and just use all the biomass in there already but i mean come on look at that you don't need any more help over there this thing's 
pretty damn established. Whereas over here, a lot of encroaching weeds, a lot of uh, torpedo grass, a lot of uh, um, Caesar weed more than anything. Look at this, it's like a, it's almost like a lawn of Caesar weed. That's all Caesar weed. And that's what this looked like. I forgot to film here, but whatever, you get the point. So what the banana biomass does is more than anything is it really helps stifle those kinds of weeds, you know. These kinds of weeds need A, shade to, to, to block them so that they don't grow as fast, or B, uh, smothering. And that's, you know, smothering is a form of shade in a sense. Like, there's no way that the Caesar weeds are going to poke through all this heavy biomass. Um, not as easily, at least. Um, I'm not saying it's a perfect solution, but it gives you enough breathing time, breathing space for like um, a next round of managing. You can come back with more material, kind of to keep keep stifling it and keep uh, keep the weeds at bay, while at the same time adding nutrients to the soil and at the same time um, releasing water, so irrigation. So it's kind of why I love the bananas so much, just because. You can utilize the power of that system to help move along a new system that doesn't have much power. And the bananas are the best way to do that because they're all, they're, they are already starting to phase themselves out a bit in there. Um, because there's a lot of shade, you know, there's a lot of competition. So the bananas kind of, you know, you want to start being able to take a lot of them down at this point. Um, but yeah, and then just kind of just stomping on, you know, the Caesar weed kind of helps to just making access uh sort of a organizing the biomass so that you know that this is this is where the biomass goes and this is where the access is so you keep going down the access paths over and over and over and that kind of helps stifle some of the weeds as well so i started specifically here because this is where i noticed that the water would pull up after an intense rain so a bit of a low spot so all that biomass sort of helps trickle the water like break the water up and maybe help absorb some of that standing water so uh whereas this this was the last little bit of the mulch that i had this was kind of like up and didn't need much love so now that this is fully sort of a uh, biomassed out i'm gonna start putting more bananas here and there's still plenty of bananas in there to use so uh that's kind of where i'm at now i'm not sure how much further i'll get but i'll keep y'all updated um yeah that that's it just bananas 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 they're so so helpful so probably going to be ending ending up doing the maybe more bananas on the other side but also uh probably moringas now too and the moringas i'll probably just keep the biomass in the system uh just because it doesn't do much in the way of stifling uh weeds so uh yeah sunlight coming in and that's a good thing all right, so I didn't, I didn't even have time to focus on other species today. I just continued with bananas. So this banana, the Pisang Ceylon, was a little thick. Cut two of them to let that sunlight in. It's a really beautiful sunny morning, so you can really see the difference uh, of the sunlight that's able to poke in now. This is nice. This is really nice. It was getting a little stifled with all the bananas, so... And here, the Saba banana was gigantic and beautiful, but I already know that the Saba is a winner. I already have a Saba banana rack fruiting over there. So I don't particularly need this. It has really nice pups. So I went ahead and sacrificed this big boy here. I could even go uh, heavier on the pruning, but I'm pretty much done for the day, I think. It smells lovely right here. This is a sable palm going to flower right now oh my goodness smells heavenly uh okay so same with this banana here you can see another pasang ceylon i might be able to even string these up now i have enough big trees at this point where i think i could prop bananas up just by kind of stringing them might be an idea because these are prone to to falling over so oh i didn't even finish i gotta bring those over so same here this there was another few bananas in here and also right here so plenty 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 of bananas 
Uh, I'm keeping the ones that are fruiting in the summer and getting rid of the other ones that will fruit in the winter. I got some achote seeds that I need to harvest. And then I also thinned this one. This is another Saba that had a beautiful pup coming out here, but it already has another beautiful pup here. So I'll just let this one fruit and then let this one be the future. And so what that's left me was with a really, really, really resilient um, new area. See, this is kind of an uphill battle here. Like I said, the weed seed load is crazy. There's a lot more sun, There's a lot more growth going to happen here because it's just super sunny here. And so the only way that I feel comfortable leaving this alone for two weeks and being able to go on vacation or go travel is to have this amount of biomass down. It kind of takes that edge off. It gives me peace of mind. And like I said before, this system is already super bountiful. It doesn't need any more biomass. Or else I'll just keep feeding biomass to the same trees over and over and over again. Um, that really at this point don't need it. Um, it's always nice to open up a new area every, every year, you know, every spring, so that you have a location to drop off that excess biomass from the bananas. Even if it's just, a, even if you don't get around to opening up a new area, and you can always just go ahead and put banana biomass just like in an area that you would like to work in. So let's just say I didn't do any of this setup. I do know that I, I wanted to use this area. So I could have just brought all that biomass and just made a nice, really resilient line of biomass for, you know, next spring. I could just kind of tease everything apart and, and plant into that. So it's always thinking one season ahead it always helps. So there was a plenty of biomass to even um, fortify these early facacias. Early facacias are obviously very, very helpful trees uh, for new areas like this, as our, uh, what you might call it, carrot wood. So yeah, these were already kind of here trying to, trying to grow. So I'm just gonna give them a little bit of a head start and give them the biomass they need so that things don't encroach too bad on them. But that's it, you know, look at all that biomass. Just really, really trying to reinforce the idea that the bananas are your best friend. So plant a lot of them, thin them out, open up new areas with them and so on and so forth. So hopefully I'll keep going down over the years. But uh, I think that's, I'm gonna call it for today. I've got other stuff to do. But yeah, you can definitely see things are opening up really, really nicely now that a lot of the bananas have been managed. I can buy myself some time from having to cut the moringas or doing any more canopy work just because the bananas are themselves just such big plants that managing a few of them really opens up a lot of sunlight. So I'm happy with that. And uh, yeah, I'm going to call it for the day. And yeah, just keep making updates. Summer pruning is well underway oh yeah here's a the avocado that was getting trapped by that banana earlier so now it's able to sort of straighten up and make its way up anyways yeah just appreciating that sunlight that's able to poke on and oh yeah before i go the shampoo gingers are finally starting Woohoo! so yeah definitely oh that's refreshing all right peace